Hello, hello, our visionary entrepreneurs, life changers. Welcome, welcome back to our abundant, to the abundant entrepreneurs group. And today we're live for our Momentum Monday. Is our day? It's our episode 118. 118. And what's our topic? today's topic? Is finding your path. How many of you welcome, welcome today's Monday, right? And by the way, in New York, I'm based here in New York City, and um, it's just like a feeling. We just get into spring and a little bit uh, come back to winter time. Like today's the temperature in the early morning was only about in the 40s. It's a, it's like oh unbelievable. And so we were talking about the global warming, global warming. Everybody, please pay attention to protect our environments, save our energy, really save our earth. And I'm so grateful that in my backyard, even though I know outside is still cold, we just had a two days a big rain. And uh, I'm now I'm sitting in my home office and looking at my backyard full of a green, like the spring green, the color beautiful, and my tulips just uh, you know blossomed, and the cherry blossom in our community just passed the blossom time, and now it's really like a deeper into the spring, but now the weather is look like a cold uh, in the winter, so it's definitely like our journey, like our path, right, like our life path. And sometimes we feel like we are moving forward, and uh, and then later we found that we may be backward a little bit, and then like go forward, and then maybe just like uh, going falling back uh, again. And life is never like a straight straight path, never. It's like sometimes you have to take a detours, right? And it's it's talking about the past. We have really unlimited topic to talk about, and I'm just curious, please comment under my video, no matter if you are listening to this live video or listening to the replay. I'm just curious, on your path, now you're on your path, but are you clear about what kind of a path you are taking? And are you clear where your path is taking you to, right? So this is a very interesting topic, and today I'm grateful that we have quite some like a, people and especially entrepreneurs, they, they said they are interested in attending our live event. And I hope for if you are, did not catch up the live one, you will attend, uh, you know, really definitely watch the replay because today's topic is super important, super important. Many people are like very busy every day, look like they are busy, right? We have so many people looks like, oh, they are so busy. But do you feel joyful and fulfilling? in your business it, this is not just like a entrepreneurship kind of business right but every day in your busy busy business that kind of business what do you feel this is most important are you just like uh, being busy as a routine do not even have a feeling majority of people i still remember that time when you were like uh, let's say on the track not necessarily a pass. Now I will de define this difference between track and um, path. The track, the society has their defined track. Your family, like your parents, had their defined track. And it's just like a people around you, maybe your friends, your teachers, or your whoever, like your social friends, right? You will feel that kind of track is defined already for you that track it's like oh go this way that track sounds like easy actually because it's straight they would say tell you that uh, become an excellent student in the in the school and uh, you know and then grad uh, go to a good college and then graduate uh, to go to a, a good company with a reputation with a good pay, with good position, and with like a, that kind of track is going to a ladder, by the way. You go straight and you go ladder. Climb the ladder, get a higher, a higher position, and get more and more pay, right? That is like a, sounds so familiar, right? How many of you feel like it's familiar? You can comment under, under a video, let me know, like it's familiar, right? And, uh, I, I believe nobody is like a strange for them from this track defined by the society, you know, including maybe your loved one. They are just in that circle. 
I do not blame them at all. By the way, my parents, I remember my first job after I graduated from a, a, a great uh, prestigious university in China back then. That's over how many years? My God, it's like uh, 30, 30, uh, almost like 30, over 30 years. And um, my first job is um, was in in a national bank. It's a created in a headquarter in Beijing, in the capital, in the capital city. And then if you have some like international uh, geography lineage or uh, some like a lineage, right, you will know that the Beijing is actually now developed as a very modern, or very advanced city. Even even 30 around 30 years ago, that's still like a great city, right? Um, like during that time, a national bank in the headquarter, that kind of a position, the payment is already like uh, quite advanced among my alumni. And my parents were so proud of me, and um, so they were super happy for me, right? They proud for me and also for themselves because they can lift up their head uh, in front of our, our like people in our hometown. But then, just two years, in short, two years, I designed <laughs> from that national bank and tried to go abroad. I tried to like I got um, you know I attended TOEFL, I attended the GRE, and get admitted to the university, the, the Columbia University to go to College of uh, Teachers. I can imagine that after I, you know, I graduated from a computer science during that time is super, super hot, uh, super hot major. Until now, it's still like quite hot, right? Um, and I got a good job and good pay, but I designed and I want to go to go to a board to study in the school again for the PhD. And uh, I, I choose the, the major was in education leadership of education okay that's and then because i found that's my true passion and the true love i i did not find my passion in computer science unfortunately uh, even though that's a great uh, great technology great science and it's a great foundation for me as well and it did help me in my current uh, in my in my later career and also business as well but my passion was in education so i resigned i i resigned from that uh, bank my parents felt like so. My my mother said, "Oh my, that's a pity. You should have kept it. It's a good job, da, 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 right?" And I do not blame them because it's it is it was. And during that time, it's not so far now. It's still it is, and a good job. But I since that time, I already started to pursue my passion. I was so proud of myself. Um, but never. Did I know that I my visa application got rejected? I did not get uh, my visa to come to the U.S. to pursue my dream for the education uh, in Columbia University. Otherwise, today I would I would have been the uh, Columbia University's PhD, right, from the College of uh, Teachers. I don't know now. Maybe I would be a principal in some kind of a, like a school, or maybe in a college to be a professor, or I don't know. It, that kind of path will be in that education system and um, but for leadership as well but you can see some some like uh, some uh, hint from that time to my now right what I'm doing now as a coach by the way between this these two I never thought about I would get into coaching because during that time I was rejected the visa you could imagine that I've already resigned from that bank and uh, I was devastated I lost my best job and then I did not get get a visa to go to Columbia University to, to pursue my PhD in education. Gosh. And more for that, I was devastated not just for I did not get a chance to go to the, the university, the famous university, right, to pursue my, my passion. But I was devastated because I wanted to come to the US not just be not just for education, not just for any American dream. I want to come to the US for my love because that's, that was my major motivation why I want to leave China, you know, where I lived almost like, a, let's say, do not time 26, 20 years, 26, almost like 26 years, and leave my parents, right, leave my hometown, leave every, like, things I'm uh, familiar with to come to U.S. I was not initially motivated to U.S. at all, but it's just because I met my love, my first love in the university in, in China, and then he. He came back to the U.S. and his whole family is in the U.S. and he actually he's already immigrated his whole family. So my only my only purpose during that time and, and my only motivation was to to gather with him, 
to stay with him, right? To to find the place to just go to the place where he stays. That's my only motivation. <laughs> that's that's motivating me to pursue my higher education as well. At least I was I was thinking like uh, even without any PhD or master, I was okay with my you know computer science. I was working very well. So, but then for love, that's the greatest motivation for me to come to the U.S. So I was, you know, lost a job, did not get my visa, could not come to the U.S. for my love and also for my education passion. Gosh, that's, you could not imagine how devastated I was. I super, super lost my, lost my spirit, lost my just like a motivation, everything. It's just like feeling life was so unfair. Because it's that time, the things, the visa, right, it's not decided by me. It's just like no matter how hard you work, how, how hard you study or pursue, you are so close, like that close to your dream, to what you pursue. Like sounds like an ideal life, right? And you were rejected. It's just like you were unfairly rejected. It's like, uh, what's the reason, whatever, right? It's just like your life, that's the first time I may felt like life was out of my control. That's, that was totally, I feel like I'm fairly rejected. Even though I put all my efforts, I earned my, um, like you say, my rights, right? Earned my rights, but then I was taken away of that rights, that equal rights. So was so devastated and for two or three years I do not time. Even though later I found a good, uh, a lot of good job, international companies, no, uh, American company actually is an international company and uh, they had a branch in Beijing. It's a great company and I also had, you know, during that time did a great uh, different functions exploration. But I would say during that time, I felt my, my soul, my spirit, everything's lost. It's just like so devastated. It's, it's like struggling because especially suffering for love, right? That kind of separation and love. That's very dark, very dark. But thank God I did not give up. I just like um, thought about the detour way. I started to study for MBA. And uh, during that time, the best one I could find is actually in China. The MBA was uh, Rutgers University here in New Jersey. It's a great uh, public university. Their MBA program, the executive MBA program, expanded to China. That's a great program. I attended it, I sponsored myself while I was working and also eventually get some sponsorship from my company. And I went into the MBA, right? I pursued the MBA, just changed my direction from education to for business administration because that's a, during that time, that's the only place I found like I could uh, pursue like to be a more, let's say, to be more capable, to be more, um, let's say, have a more opportunities in in the corporate as well, during that time, I never thought about entrepreneurship, right? Even in the corporate, I thought like MBA, executive MBA will help me pursue better track. Can you see that? That's a little bit, get back to track. Like from the track, old track, I pursued my uh, passion for education. So it sounds like I found my path, but then I was forced back to the track. You can see that because I forced back to find my job and then to find uh, like to go better ladder, right? So, and I tried different functions in that, uh, in that international company. It's a great opportunities, uh, eventually helped me get out of a uh, computer science and uh, explore like operations and, uh, let's say accountant manager, uh, account manager, I, I would say, and a training, uh, development, all this kind of, uh, eventually I get back to training, by the way, so I still have the passion for, for, ed for like, for education, but, but it's still like, it's still like on the track, right? You get into the corporate, you are trying to climb higher ladders. So I, I started uh, MBA, EMBA, but that did help me a lot to understand the business, right? Uh, administration from different angles. I got almost all A from different uh, like disciplines in that, uh, in that uh, program. And after that, I followed it, you know, at the same time I developed my love, right? It's still kept the remote, remote, emotional relationship. And eventually, through all this kind of hard, kind of a detour things, finally immigrated to U.S. That's another, let me see how many years. That's another almost six years later, okay? 
when I after I, my visa was rejected. That's another six years of detour, trying to get back on the track and still trying to like figure out where should I go, right? And get eventually come to the U.S. And come to the U.S. My first job I found, thank God, found it's like a Fortune 100 company, and I uh, started my position as the director of performance, managing over you know dozens of almost like a close to 100 countries uh, financial performance and uh, report to the vice president and also president. It's it's quite close to the Fortune the Fortune 100 company is quite close to the Manhattan the Manhattan's uh, Wall Street. That's another great uh, four years. I would say it's great. It's great experience, right? It's great to experience what Fortune 100 company could provide for you. And that kind of um, downtown Manhattan, Wall Street, everything can provide for you, right? So, but life was still like on that track. As you can see, today I just want to share with you some about my path, okay? It's never, it's never like a, a straight, right? This track, I, it's like I found some hint of my path, my passion, and then I had to get back to because I rejected for visa, I had to get back to my track. And now I come to the US and I still get into like a corporate world, right? To figure out my track and trying to see how I could get to higher level on that performance management uh, ladder, right? That's still like a, a little bit track. And uh, till after four years of it, then we get into 2008 and 2009. Remember that's a financial crisis happened financial crisis and uh, the Neiman brother bank just next next street to our company a headquarter I, I was still working in the headquarters it's, it's quite a blessing um, but they that bank bankrupted and my company is actually in the center in the center of that financial crisis and uh, also hugely impacted and they start to have a big organization change and my whole department moved to from New York to New Jersey and before that they laid off many people and I was one of them even though I was a performance director even though I had a great uh, performance appraisal from uh, from my leader from the uh, VP and the president right but I still was let go and during that time I just gave birth to the second baby and, and I just returned to work for let's say just uh, within a few months a few months as a new mom, right? Of the second little baby, and I was in among that kind of a group of people was to let go. It's not a big surprise, right, people? <laughs> but anyway, during that time, everybody was so dismayed, but I just got a secret, secret joy out from nowhere. On the same day, in the same morning of my night off, can you imagine that? That was not in my control. I did not invite that, but that secret joy visited me. I felt like a little bit strange inside of me because everybody felt like the end of the world because it's financial crisis and they are so worried, especially if they have a family, right? Those parents, parents, they have a family to support, and they worried about where they can find their next job. No mention about if as good as this one or where they can find a good job, right? Financial crisis. And that, that crisis lasts a few years. And it's very hard for everybody. But I got that kind of a, in that kind of a big conference room. We were waiting for the HR people to come to us, right? That's a majority of the time. That's the most of them, the most of nervous time because they will send you just a package. Notice you, uh, you were just uh, within one hour packed everything to leave the corporate. But I had a secret joy. I just felt like, not a moment, relieved. And because maybe half a year or, or even one year before that, I already felt like this track, I did not find joy. This track, I did not find a big meaning. I found, I could not even find what's my true value, right? I, I just don't know. Should I just keep doing this? I, I don't know. I did not see very clear past at all i did not see even for the track i could not see the track where is my next ladder right so because my i report to my vp could i get it to a vp as an asian an asian woman <laughs> and the mom right there could i get to a vp that's a big doubt and uh, so i did not have a pass but that kind of secret joy came out it's just like now 
and some secret voice sounds like it's telling me, now you can choose. Something like that. And I so I started to to talk and to try to relieve that kind of nervousness in that kind of atmosphere, right? And to try to console console my colleagues who are also laid off laid off. So and after I hold my small box, get out of the the the, the corporate. I went to the nearby Pier 17 of Manhattan, downtown Manhattan. It's a it's a great attraction of tourism. Normally tourists. Normally that's my that's my place to go for my lunch, for my almost like a meditation. Even though that time I was still not quite good at meditation, it's just like for me to take a break, take a breath from the corporate machine, get out to take my breath, to breathe like a real life and uh, I merge myself into the tourist people. And, you know, at that pier, and you can watch the bridge, uh, the Brooklyn Bridge and the Eastern River, and the latter side is Queens of New York Borough, and this side is Manhattan. And I normally go to that bench, and that day I also go to that bench. It's like a beach bench, right? And can I put my, down my, my stuff? got a deep breath and I made a phone call to my love, my kids dad, and tell them that I lost my job. I know it's hard, right? Because I was earning a good money during that time. I was earning more money than him. <laughs> That's maybe my, my time I could boast that I earned more money than him. He just started his business as a lawyer, but he's not uh, making as much as mine. So I noticed him that, and I was joking that, uh, now you're the one to support us. He did not say much. I just say, okay, good luck and have good rest. And did not say much. I believe it, it was a shock to him as well. He did not expect I lost my job during that time, right? But, but anyway, he's he's already started up his business. So thank God during that time, I do not need to worry too much about our, our just the, our living, our income, right? So much. And I decided during that time looking at uh, Brooklyn Bridge and the uh, Hudson River and the blue sky, you know, breathing out of fresh air and looking at the people around me, said I decided that I need to find my true life, my true path of my life, what I'm truly passionate about, what I'm here for, why I'm here, what's my life, what's the meaning for it, right? What's a What's the purpose for it? I made that decision during that time. I need to find that out. And now I'm not urged by that track. And now I'm my, my own master. I do not need to find that, like follow that track, forced to do that track, right? Because I had to live, make a living. So during that time, thank God, give me that chance. And then I did all this research. And uh, I remember I spent a luxurious six months six months to search and to search, do the, all the research and to do the inner that search as well, right? The out search online and also inner search, inner quest, the life quest, the super most important quest when I was already 35 years old. 35 years, almost like close to 35, uh, let's say, no, actually 36, that, that year I was already 36 year, years old. Uh, Let's say between, okay, still 35, not get to 36 yet. So 35 years old, I gave a birth to my second baby and I just started, I lost my job, thank God. And then just started my real past searching. Not in not six months, I searched for everything and also thank for that uh, Fortune 100 company. I got a good package and then it, the replacement package as, actually. I went to that, like I remember the name is the right management, that replacement company, a great company. They signed contract with all those like uh, Fortune 100 company, big companies to provide this kind of package on a training and a replacement training, right? For their laid off or their executive level or the laid off employees. And, um, I had that, that kind of a blessing to be coached by different coaches. That's my first time in my life to really meet coach and they are career coaches. And through their facilitation, through their consultation, 
and also I did all this research, right? And the same time I went to practical philosophy school in Manhattan to study philosophy because I, all, I, I during that time I just found my interest in philosophy to think about what's life, what's our what's our life's purpose here, right? What's about everything? Like、uh, we take granted, but thinking from a different angle, and what's wisdom, right? All this kind of thing. And this both together, the philosophy, practical philosophy, and also the career coaching, helped me tremendously. And also with my own search, research, and my own reflection, reflection. That's a big inner work during that six months. And I eventually found out that coaching is my ideal way of working to really. Use my gifts, use my strengths. During that time, I'm still not quite clear. But even I did that all this kind of a career kind of a analysis, right? My strengths. But during that time, it's still quite limited strengths. But I, at least I know what I am, you know, like really pretend to do. What I am passionate about to do, right? At this type of job, and I find coaching is the best for me to really inspire and empower other people, because I did all this kind of inner search and did my. Purpose discovery, step by step, and find my true purpose is really to help other people find their purpose, and just not follow the track, but really find their path to do what they love to do, and be themselves, become themselves instead of just a machine, in just like a school, right? In a little nail or school in a big machine, and then eventually lost yourself. When you work on that track defined by the whole society. It's very easy. Nobody would blame you, including myself, right? Very easy for all of us. Lost our own path, lost our own consciousness. Just follow the track. Get into like you were like a how to say that kind of a nail attracted by that machine, that magnet, and then fit into somewhere. And if it's not a good fit, and then that kind of school will be pushed and schooled to where some somewhere else, right? To fit in, try to fit in always on that way. Because I tried different jobs, I know that kind of a feeling, and you don't know where to fit, and always like a, that's 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 a track somebody defined, and you were forced to try to find a place to fit in, and if you're luck, right, and you just put your resume, all this kind of like in into that ocean, and try to and pray to God that somebody will pay attention to you, and somewhere some company will accept you. That kind of track, so. Until like、uh, I lost my job, I woke up, and I got this chance and took that chance to decide that I will not go back to that track, that courage, right? That time is both courage, and also like as I mentioned, that secret joy. That's、uh, that's the time like、uh, we could see. Sometimes like there's a great、uh, quote I remember they said, sometimes you find your path, sometimes your path find you, <laughs> right?、And、to me, it's just like both. My path was also try to find me, and I also found my path, and that's like a really a blessed thing. I would not say that's not just a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. And then later, when I recall, it's really like something already prepared, including my previous journey, and then including including that kind of layoff, right? I lost my job, including that at that time, and including that time I was you know become already married, become a mom, has a Economic support, and that time I started to. I know it's it's very hard for some of you, right? It's like if you do not have economic support, and you are still trying to figure that all out by yourself. And it's that's why last last week I was talking about side hustle. You could definitely do not like quit your job. You do not need immediate quit your job, right? And do your side hustle. It's a,、uh, it's like always everybody at a certain time of your life there is a right. Right chance, right blessing to open your eyes up and open your heart up as well to pursue and to search and discover to find that path. So everyone's journey is different, okay? But here I just want to share with you this kind of wisdom. What opened my eyes to really have that courage? But it's still actually it's like a courage, right? To make my decision, I do not want to go back to the corporate world to search for another Fortune one company. Because my resume can still be packaged, packaged where we are like a product. My resume can still be packaged into very well and to pursue another Fortune 100 company、uh, position. And sometimes people purposefully or like intentionally jump between different companies for them to like get a higher 
position and higher pay or better leverage, right? That's another story. But I decided during that time to follow my heart, follow my heart, not the track, follow my heart to find what I would be passionate to do, what I would love to do, what I my, my life will, will feel meaningful and purposeful and valuable to contribute to do, right? So, so since then, 20, 2000, 2009, I decide the coaching is the career I want to follow. I want to pursue. That's my path. I want to help other people. Initially, I want to start as a happiness coach, and I decided to become an entrepreneur. That's a big decision, okay? Big decision to be an entrepreneur, to explore my own path. During that time, till now, the past, right? Now, maybe the past is more and more I could see the, the future. But during that time, the past was not very super clear to me yet. Everything is uncertain. I was just a newbie, right? A newbie in the startup and entrepreneurship world. And I was super passionate, but uh, everything is uncertain. Everything. Like even my vision is not very clear at all. I just know my passion and this is my purpose. That's all. And I started it. Then never looked back. And by the way, I got my coaching certificate from a New York University. It's a great program. Um, but it's never enough, right? The majority thing I learned is from the practice. So now it's already 14 years, over 14 years. My practice is real. The real university, I would say the real education started really in my coaching business. All my previous over 20 years of formal education, including the executive MBA for the track, preparing me for the track. I could not call them like real, real learning. It's like education, it's formal education, okay? It served for its purpose to prepare us as the, uh, you know, the worker, the school or the nail to fit that big machine to prepare us for some certain function, prepare us for that kind of uh, track, okay? So it's just formal education. It has its value. I still appreciate that. But the real learning started till I found my purpose decided what I want to do, become a coach, right? To help other people discover their purpose and their passion and to do what they love to do, just to live a meaningful, happy life. So I become a happiness coach. Since then, the learning every day is really conscious in my own pursuit, aligned with my purpose. And this kind of education, it's kind of a, not self-education, training, learning, growth. It's really conscious and meaningful. It's truly meaningful because this is preparing me to explore my path, the path defined by myself. So it's for you as well. Are you now on your real learning? No matter if you're in what kind of a path now, right? Or, or track now, do you feel like you are on your pursuit? Are you on the journey of finding your path? What can, uh, do you feel that the the, the way now you are on, okay, either the track or path, the way you are on now, is it leading you to joy and fulfillment? So it's not very difficult to have that self discernment, right, to say if the path you are taking now is the right path for you. If you feel like uh, well, every day you're just doing your routine work, every day you're busy, every day you, you're not sure where you are, you're not sure. You just feel like oh, drained of your energy. Every day you're just doing what other people are expecting you to do or either your boss are asking you to do or your environment, the whole context is expecting you to do. You are just not yourself. You do, If you feel that, right, not motivated and today is a Momentum Monday, you do not feel momentum, even though you may be like a quite energetic person or maybe working in some kind of a company you're you're quite like a, how to say self-motivated but you still feel like you are not quite there yet you do not feel that true joy and blessing and that kind of a value and contribution or and fulfillment right if you feel that that means maybe that that track you are on or even though you maybe it's like a half of your path that you are on maybe it's not exactly what you are meant to be and you should still be searching and, and to find your path until you really feel that you are aligned with that path. <laughs> By the way, yeah, even though there's is a path, right? But you feel like you're aligned with it. You feel like unlimited, that kind of a, like 
uncontrollable kind of like energy, passion, joy, fulfillment. You feel like oh, this is like God. Is thank God. This is what I'm meant to be. This is where I belong. This is what I could really contribute my best value. I feel most meaningful. I feel like I'm aligned with my purpose, with my passion, with who I supposed to be. And this is a way I have the hope, I have the vision to go who I want to be and where I want to go. That would be your path. That would be your right path. I remember I'm, I was reading Oprah Winfrey's book. I, I'm reading now this this fifth book, and last book is about the past made clear. We were talking almost also about the purpose, the direction, right? And this book about the wisdom of Sundays, about the life change insights from Super Soul Conversations by Oprah Winfrey, and there's also like on on this one. It's also this this week we we're talking about we we're reading about fulfillment, right? They were talking about the fulfillment. What's a fulfillment? When when you are really fully aligned with your purpose, with what you are called here to be and to do, and that. And especially when you are serving, you're serving, then you will feel that fulfillment. So that's a path, even though they're not using these words, right? That kind of fulfillment is also the path. And、uh, I remember quite many、um, of my mentors on this path. I'm so grateful. The most grateful things like I get chance to coach, coach other people, inspire other people, empower them, lift them up to live their vision. At the same time, myself, I keep learning as a student. I have my great mentors. I'm so grateful for all those like thought leaders who are working ahead of me, and some of them, of them may be like a, a, a side of me, but many of them, those great mentors, they are far, far ahead of me. I'm super grateful. For example, like Tony Robbins, thing like all, all like all problem free, right? They their life path is also like much into detours, and they. They had quite many, like even more, maybe darkness time than me. All different, I would say. It's not more than me, but it's like everyone has our own different darkness, right? Darkest light, lights of our life, or darkest nights of our soul. Everyone has our own detours journey. I had quite many years. Remember, I all my motivation come to the U.S. is love. But then one day, a few years, quite a few years ago, I lost my love. He betrayed. I found he betrayed. Devastating to me, and I found we are on different path now. I'm on this personal development, coaching, passion,、uh, you know, spiritual path where my life is supposed to be. He is on his path. He's on his um, you know, as a lawyer, serving his clients, solving his their problems. But at the same time, he's surrounded by worldly people, as you can imagine. Is helping those people solving their troubles, but all those worldly people surrounding him, and、uh, limiting his thoughts, his perspectives, his views of life, everything in that circle as well. And、uh, I found a big and a big gap of us, and we did not have much to communicate anymore. And then one day, and I just found he betrayed. That's very devastating. That's the darkest, darkest. Nights of my life, of my life, for a few years, I almost tried suicide, and literally, it's really like I almost died on the Long Island Railroad. But God saved my life. The truck, the the train stopped for me, and、uh, God really saved my life, literally, right? So, and after that, I woke up again. I woke up again. That my life does not belong to me. I was not meant to die on that truck. At that time, that truck, right, that railroad truck, I was not meant to die. And my life is for greater purpose. My life is for greater love. And since then, after I resurrected, resurrected from that death, really from everything death, from like physically, almost like physically, and also spiritually, mentally, everything that's a death, my emotional. Totally death from those a few years, and when then piece by piece I resurrected, God re transformed me into another person, reformed me, gave a new life back to me, and this life is with abundance. I discovered this new path. Even though that previously I had the path already, right? As a coach, as my passion to empower other people, and I'm still now on this coaching path. 
but God gave me, transformed me to be newly alive and fully aligned with the new higher path. And this path, previously I was on the happiness path, and now I'm on the abundance path. It's totally different dimension, totally different wisdom and dimension of the life. I just feel like a new world opened to me, and now. I know that the majority of people still think that happiness is our life purpose. It's not a wrong, it's not a wrong understanding of wisdom, right? And even like it's really like happiness. We are here. We want to live a happy life, but the next level is really abundance, and because that's during my most darkest time, most painful time, most unhappy time, I found abundance, and I, I understood that even when we lost everything. We could still live in abundance with our God, with our Creator, with our universal intelligence. Doesn't matter what's your, what's your faith. I'm not religious, but here I would say it's faith. No matter what is your faith, and I, I, let let me just call it universal intelligence, right? That's a total another level of a blessing. Much much more, more abundant, more than I could even describe. Than just happiness, even though you could not feel happiness, even though during that time I could not even smile. Because every time when I was still serving, helping other people, my heart inside was tearing, was bleeding, was like a, still like wounded, half broken, but I was still trying to help other people. The best thing I did the right, I did the right thing, the best thing during my brokenness, was that. I was still investing in myself to grow myself. I was still attending those great masters events, their training, their master program, mastermind program. So it's like I never stopped invest myself to grow myself, and as a forever student in God's grace, and I was resurrected into that abundance level. That's a total new level of path, and this path is my true path. And this path, by the way, everyone would think that the path leads to the destination. Many people think we have been hardly pursuing the destination, right? But the path is really not about the destination. The path is more about the journey. The journey. On this journey, every day, actually, the fulfillment also is not a destiny. Fulfillment is on this journey as well. Every day. It's really possible for everyone, for us, every day. You could get into and touch that alignment and fulfillment. Here I would say, the journey is the most important, which is the presence, which you feel now, and which can expand. Destiny is never the ending point of the journey. Okay, many people say, oh, destiny is at the end of the journey. No, destiny actually is never the ending point of the journey. But the highest state through the journey, okay. So destiny, our destiny is like every day we are on this journey, and every day we strive to learn, to grow, to progress. Tony Robbins said that progress is happiness, right? And as long as we are progressing, and we are aligned with this path, every day we keep growing to the next version of ourselves, a better every day, get a, become a better. Every day, get closer to our best me, right? Best self, and so that kind of a destiny and ultimate per- fulfillment is really the higher, highest state, and it expands, always expands. When you get here, you always like the the past will unfold to you. That's the best feeling, actually. The past will always unfold to you when you find the right path. If you are on the wrong path, track or path. You will get to the dead end many times. Often will hit the hard wall, the dead end. But if you are on the right path, it's unlimited. It's infinite. It's unfolding to you every day. And sometimes you will, when you are really following that bliss, and people say that I follow that flow on that right path and aligned with that path, you will find effortless. Because you are doing what you love to do, you are doing what you call to do. You are on the path you are meant to be on, and that will feel sometimes it's really like this is a blessing, this is a heaven, and it's defined that the path is 
unfolding to you, but at the same time, you are a co-creator. Never forget about that part. You're a co-creator and it's defined by you. And this is just like a dancing. This is like a dancing. A couple dance together. You, you're create create the universal intelligence also unfolding, showing that to you. So and it, it keeps expanding. So that's a wonderful journey. Okay. So here, how to find, how to create a path that can lead you to the joy and, and, and the fulfillment for both the journey and also the destiny. Okay. So I summarize a few like so verb words that how we, we could really find this path. First is really keep learning. Keep learning. Okay. Do not stop learning. Do not just like, so, oh, I finished my education. So it's enough. I just use whatever I have to, to do the work. Right in the corporate, it could be like that way. People just feeling it, fit into their function and just use whatever they they have. Or the corporates also use whatever you have to just serve. That's never enough, okay? Till we become like really in the entrepreneurship. When we found our path, our purpose for past, you will find that your learning, this kind of inquiry style of true learning, just started. Keep learning. Like, like I, every day now, I'm keep reading, keep learning from those masters. Keep learning because only this. It can expand your potential, expand and redefine your potential, okay? And also explore. Then learn, right? Explore. Explore what's the path. The path, even though now I'm in a more like a clear, more and more clear path, but I still need to explore because it's not like fully certain there. I need like a, while I'm practicing and learning and I need to explore to see what's the next step, the better way to align with my path. I need to discover your path discover when you have that searching heart when you pursue the heart the, the path will show it to you okay so you need to discover always be like adventurous and also always never stop your heart of pursuing and searching okay to discover the best path for you like even now i'm doing what i love to do right as a abundance uh, coach to help many visionary entrepreneurs and life changers to become the you know become the confident experts and thought leader in their own ideal niche to transform and impact many lives that's what i do now i help them to become thought leaders to make a bigger impact to have a great uh, like a uh, fulfillment like what we're talking today right to fully align with the path every day and that's what i do but at the same time um, i still need to discover and uh, to explore right what is um, the best way for me to practice my passion and also align every day of myself, align with my purpose, with my vision, with my dreams, with this path that God is unfold, unfolding to me every day. And I am also working on it to see where is the best path I'm going. This path is still not straight, okay? This path could still be like a detour. There could be many distractions, by the way. You could have like a multiple paths in front of you. Even though like, in a bigger direction, you felt like you're on the right path, but then you could find some small detours and then you made, made the right decision, right? So you need to also plan, plan for it, plan which path should I take and plan what should I do to get to like get more prepared and get better like um, the only, it's just like thinking about you as the adventurer. You're holding your backpack and you have your compass in your hand. And in, and there are multiple tours like like uh, detours in front of you. You need to plan where should I go, right? And have all this kind of preparation and planning as well. And then you need to create. Like you are the co-creator, create your path, create your path, with uh, the resources, with all these kind of things available to you, okay? And you need to create with your gifts as well. You, we, every one of us are creative genius inside of us. We did not know everyone, believe me. For example, if you go to learn arts at whatever age, if you are passionate about it, if you have that patience to practice, by time, in no time, you become an artist. We witnessed so many, right? We witnessed so many great examples. Now social media, now it's so convenient for us to to find those examples. Not difficult at all to find those examples. And today I remember early morning I was watching some like Instagram uh, video that like even a, uh, like an old driver, because of his uh, 
many times of practice, right? Years of years of practice. He now become an artist just using different painting to mix the color to matching. For example, people give him a like sample of this color they want because they want to paint, right? That kind of a painting on their car because they have the either scratch or whatever, right? They want to just uh, re re how to say refine it or or beautify it. That that driver with his experience with his practice. He could use all his like uh, available kind of a paintings to mix mix color to create in just minutes exactly that color matching whatever sample people give to him that's amazing right he, he's a part this is an artist and many other stories like like uh, like a grandma age of people and a grandpa age of people right they they had nothing to do now they get finally get a chance to explore their curiosity and creativity and they start to learn painting or start to do whatever they want to explore right some other people may do other like uh, hobbies and they all become that kind of creative genius okay so many stories that you can just uh, find every day so that means like we have that creative genius inside of us either it's hidden or it's like just waiting for the time to be unleashed right so always create that's why i love in entrepreneurship i create including this momentum monday every monday i create right for this new topic this new great content this new great uh, like uh uh that's really like a meaningful multiple things to share to inspire and then finally you serve okay that word like a verb is serve 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 and i, I remember all uh, problem free tony robbins all those great thought leader and mentor always emphasize never enough about the service and especially when you are on the path now, right? Or maybe get close to a path, or sometimes you may still like off the path. And how could you quickly really find the true path? The best word maybe is really focus on the service, serve. What's, just focus on what's the best way for you to serve. Instead of focus on yourself, okay? Focus on people, focus on who that like, you have the passion, love to serve. And you have the like a gift and the talent, the both the like a passion, the energy, the interest to serve, and that's where you can find the all problem free called her like sweet spot. I would call that's our, our niche, right? Our purposeful and profitable ideal niche. That's your ideal niche. When you can find that, you are on your path as well. The niche is also part of your path. It's just like niche is more like a, a entrepreneurship and a strategic way to define your path until you can find your path right that truly important things how you can really follow that path since now on you need to clarify clarify every day that should be your 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 work every day i'm been doing abundance meditation every day to align with my dreams with my vision that's the most important practice for you to not lose your path to not get off your your path and that's uh, that's the best practice to help you right every day to strengthen your what's your dreams what's your vision what's my purpose here to help you realign realign every day because every day we get so many distractions and uh, sometimes it's frustrations right sometimes it's depression sometimes it's all those things from the world could could drag you could really like uh, grab you to other things and uh, really dismay you but by this kind of practice abundance meditation and really by clarify your vision your dreams to help you to realign with it and the more every day you remind yourself to practice a gratitude practice a visualization the more you will be on this path and this path will unfold to you and you will also co-create this path because within for example in that visualization and um, i just uh, basically it's just like a co-created a code like a dancing with my creator co-create that path and the path will become Expand it, unfold a little bit by little bit, every day, every day. It's this amazing journey. But first you need get onto this, start to do this work. The first step is to clarify your dreams and your vision, because that will be your direction. And you could still have detours, right? But you should not lose your direction. You should at least know where is my North Star to go, right? Where is my North Star? And then to figure out by your compass or by all this kind of practice we are talking about to align yourself. But you need to first find your lost star, right? That big direction. That's the most important thing. So at almost the end of today's Momentum Monday topic, I want to invite you, many of you, how many of you are clear, super clear about your dream and your vision. 
Do you have a clear vision in front of you that your star is leading you? Or are you still struggling to figure that out? Are you still struggling? And even you do not even have a clear vision. And some of you, like by the way, by my side in my desktop, I have a, my vision board, colorful one, printed, and also have my dream list. And also I, I, in my bedroom, I also have the copy of my uh, manifesto, I call my manifesto. I, I turned, by the way, that into my abundant entrepreneur's manifesto as well. I, I should remind my my members to to review that as well. But that helps us to understand who we are, who the person we are, what we are here for, what kind of like things we are pursue and what things we are called to do. That's like a high level of like common purpose for our abundant entrepreneurs. But each of you. You, you you will have your own specific purpose because our life, all every one of our life is unique, and that's the beauty of this creation, this whole magical life and uh, the whole universe, right? This is abundant part. That's abundance, the truly abundance. The foundation is like God has already created this abundance because He created each one of us, and every one of us is unique, is different, and we have our own unique purpose and path to go to contribute to this world, to serve other people, right? To serve the people we are called to serve and use the way we are called to, to serve and also uh, to really um, like use all our potential, all our unique purpose, our unique gifts, our talents. Because every one of us, we have the combination of our talents differently. That's our secret weapon. And some people may call like a secret source, right? It's just that everyone will have a different one. So you have a different power, uh, our unique power. And that's where I want to invite you. Do you have, a, by the way, your dream list? Do you have your colorful vision board in front of you every day? So whenever you may lose your vision of your path, you can just quickly re review it, remind you every day that what you are meant for. And now I've, I would be so proud of previously, right? I remember my first vision board I created is 2012. It's 11 years ago. And then through a later years, I have a few different copies. But now this version is almost like similar, staying there because this path is clear and clear to me. It's even though I know it would not be a street word, right? Street street path, but this path, I know where I'm going. Very clear, step by step. I have seven steps there, very clear. This is definitely every day a life changer, and every day helped me never give up, never just like a get off my path because this is my path. I know where I'm going, what I'm called to fulfill, what kind of big visions, but even so special. Now I'm just get into every day that kind of visualization into the details, into what specifically this step means and what I would feel in that kind of details, in that kind of co-creation. So this is a wonderful journey. I definitely invite you. If you do not have a clear dream list and a vision board and also do not know how to help yourself to align this path to really find this best path for yourself and really align yourself to go to to also at the same time enjoy this journey of joy and uh, fulfillment we i invite you to attend uh, this thursday our live event it's a dream it's a dreams and a vision board workshop we would guide you in the live workshop to understand all the wisdom about the dreams, about the wishing board, and also the strategic practice, and help you create your wishing board on the spot inside of the workshop. It's 90 minutes of workshop, okay? We will have a presentation. We'll teach you seven different, at least seven different ways, different models, different templates and formats about your wishing board. And in the above, it's like all this wisdom, how you can get there quickly, just through one workshop to find your lost star and to really create the dream list and the vision board that could guide you every day on this path to enjoy the really the blessing and also the fulfillment. Okay, so everyone, I will share that link uh, right uh, uh, after this, uh, this video, under my video, and make sure that you will check the link and register and we will meet inside. And by the way, you have get a chance by enrolling it, you can also to contribute, like donate to our courses to our charities we are using this workshop to support many other uh, non-profit organizations as well to support their vulnerable members to find their dreams and uh, vision so that could change their lives it's not just giving them materials but really give them the, this tool this uh, like uh, teach them how to fish to change their own lives and their generation's lives 
So thank you, everyone. We will look forward to seeing you inside of our Dreams and Vision Board workshop. See you, and let's help you together clarify your path and help you to start your joy and fulfillment from today. Okay, everyone. See you. Bye-bye.